So hi everybody, um, let's start this, this new infrastructure meeting. Uh, we have many four topics that we want to discuss. Uh, the, fir the first one, uh, I mean, there is no real order, but uh, the first one is uh, the IBM infrastructure and the current work. Um, as far as I know, maybe I missed something, but we, are still, we still have access to the to temporary machines. Uh, Jim, can you confirm this? Yep, the S390 machine is yours, and that's not temporary. You guys have that. Okay. Uh, power, power is temporary. That is, we're talking to legal, and you guys probably don't know how well that goes. Uh, yes. So it, it might be a little while for like a hardcore machine that dedicated you guys. Uh, but that temporary machine you guys have is not going anywhere uh, for the time being. So feel free to utilize it. Okay, but you confirmed that the S390. No, 90, uh, it's, it's, a, it's fixed, so we can start working on it. Yeah, so that the S390 is yours. Uh, that's not the one changed. That's, that's hosted, and that's already taken care of. The power will be eventually um, switched over to a full-time server. Okay. Um, I created a new epic for this specific work, which is Infra 2519. So... Uh, if you are, I mean, you can feel free to follow that. Um, basically, what we are looking right now is some Ansible script or at least a script that we can use to configure that machines. As far as I know, Mark Waite already did some uh, experiments uh, with that uh, specific machine. Is it right? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually still using it and I have learned, uh, learned several things from the using it experience. So Jim, I think you had advised me earlier that we need to use Git LFS from from the standard download or from the download site, not from the package provided by the OS. And I can confirm absolutely mm -hmm. modern Git LFS is much better to use in the, in the case of tests I'm running than, than the outdated Git LFS that's included with the OS. Also open J nine is crucial on series 390. Uh, I haven't tried Open JDK with hotspot on 390, adopt Open JDK, but Open J9 performs very reasonably. The bundled JD, JDK is completely unacceptable. It's really painful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I think that does change once you get past Java 8. Java 8 and above, or sorry, uh, anything above 8 uh, should have the JIT built in uh, so that S390 performance should be good. So if you switch to 11, uh, you feel free to use anything you want because uh, it should work. Um, but I know for Java 8, it wasn't, it didn't get into the release or, or I, I don't know what happened, but uh, you have to use the adopt version uh, to get that performance. Okay. Um, Mark, if you can, if you could share um, a script, so all the instructions, the instructions to configure that machine it would be nice so we can move Super forward in. with this. What and was once, that infra ticket again? You said there is an infra so, ticket. Yeah, so there is an epic, so if you uh, put the link in the Google Doc. Ah, okay. So it's infra it's, uh, 2519. Yep. Right, thanks. And so you should, you should, you should find the right uh, ticket um, below the, that epic, so. Interesting. To infra 2519? Yes. Oh, uh, it would help if I typed correctly. Sorry, got it. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, once 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 the, the agent is configured, we can add it to see the Jenkins that I I put all the instruction in one of the tickets. Um, it should be pretty easy to find. Um, but yeah, nothing more to add here. Oops. Um, next topic is about uh, moving Seattle Jenkins that I/O on AWS. Uh, right now, the main work as it, that has been done was to create specific MI that we can use from Seattle Jenkins at IO. So the main the main focus for right now is to is to move all the agents, all the virtual machines from Azure on Amazon. Um, I configure Seattle Jenkins at IO with the right credentials. Um, Tim Ja and Alex Old made um, Packer images for Amazon. So it seems to be working now. I just configured Ubuntu one and it was working a few minutes before the meeting. So 
I should be able to to put more machines there uh, and reduce the, um, the number of Azure machines that we can provision. I'm not planning to remove the Azure. I'm still planning to keep it as a full bike, but I would like to give to, to keep that number of machines as low as possible. Um, so once once the Ubuntu machine is working correctly, I will put the Windows machine, and I will probably also add the ARM uh, 64. So we can we can use specific instances running on ARM on Amazon. So um, it could be useful um, if if you want to do some tests on it with that specific architect architecture. Yes, Mark. And and the master will likely then continue on Azure for the foreseeable future. Not that I care because you you keep me hidden away with DNS references, but I assume the master stays on Azure for the for a while. Yeah, so there is no plan right now. There are no plan right now to move the master. Um, it's working, and maybe once we have. So the, the main reason for that is because moving the agents on on Amazon is quite easy because we just have to specify the security group and we have to use public IPs anyway. So the configuration is quite simple to put in place. But if we want to deploy more, more resources like Kubernetes cluster, or whatever, we need to put in place some Terraform for that, Terraform code for that, and uh, it will require more work. So right now the focus is just to reduce the Azure build to use uh, Amazon uh, compute. But the next step is definitely would be I would be really happy if we could deploy a second Kubernetes cluster on Amazon and start using it. Thanks. Any questions regarding the AWS um, migration? Uh, just a uh, yeah. One one question is um, so we'll have ARM sixty four uh, from AWS. Uh, there is no current offering or cloud offering for ARM thirty two, right? Um, I yes, I think you're right. Okay, yeah, I, I do a lot of people, and I was, you know, we were talking in the IRC. Do a lot of people use ARM thirty two? Have you guys seen any um, usage uh, of that? No. Uh, maybe maybe I like, guess some some ideas, but I, I really doubt that we can find some stats about that. Um, is it right? There is no way that we can have that information. I like well, you. We're, we're not hearing you, but you're not muted, oddly enough. Is it better now? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we could uh, get some information from uh, our stats. And if somebody spends time, I believe that we could uh, have this information public at least uh, for commonly used platforms. Uh, but yeah, right now you cannot get anything from the website. I mean, stats Jenkins say, yeah. Okay. So, so you think that there is data being gathered that might be available in the raw data store, Oleg, that, that we could tell us if we're running on ARM32? Mm, I believe so, because platform is um, a part of the metadata being submitted. Uh, also, uh, plugins like support core plugin also collected this information. Uh, so yeah, you could extract it uh, using this information as well. Could you guys also uh, pull anything from Docker Hub? I don't know what kind of stats they give you in terms of, is it just overall polls or they tell you about um, architecture? We don't have uh, official images for ARM right now on Docker Hub. Okay. So well, the statistics wouldn't be that high. Okay. And I believe uh, we have never promoted uh, experimental ARM images. But it would be interesting to anyway put um, an image and see if people are interested about that. I mean, what would be the best way to see? Right. Mm. So, so going forwards with like ARM32, if we wanted to produce an image, we, we, I know there was talks, I think Oleg, you, it was Oleg and Mark, you guys were talking about the Windows guests uh, running some of the hardware from houses or apartments. It was on the mailing list from a long time ago. Uh, is that something we would do for like ARM32? Like we want to build on architecture, we get like community uh, support in terms of hosting our, you know, infrastructure for ARM32? Yeah, I, I think in terms of market interest, the, the, the market interest is much stronger in 
the ARM64 stuff that yes. Amazon's providing, I'm not worried about hosting our, about ARM32. Uh, if, mm -hmm. if, we, if there's a press for it and if there's a community drive for it, at that time we then see, for me it was a, a, a fun conversation, but I don't think we'd be safe in relying on hardware contributed from basements that <laughs> typically we've tried to keep ci.jenkins.io very safe in terms yes. of what it uses as resources. No, that, that makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah, and one of the other reasons why I'm not comfortable to put machines that are hosted in, in one person basement is because if that machine is down, there is no way to replace it or whatever. So mm -hmm. I think prefer a more stable situation because I don't want no. to. No, you're totally right, and I think I think ARM sixty four, like especially with all the new Raspberry Pis, uh, I think three and up uh, slide. Uh, sorry, Alex and I were talking about um, R sixty four bit or, or ARM sixty four. So I don't really know where other people are pulling, uh, like I guess ARM you know hardware from, unless you're using some sort of cloud service. So uh, yep. So. I think everything is said on, on that infrastructure. Um, I will I will just um, try to use the MI on on, on ARM sixty four, and I will just put a new labels on Seattle Jenkins at IO so we can we can do some tests from there. Um, the next topic that I want to discuss is modern, modernize Mirrors, the Jenkins that I use. Um, so um, you may have seen this, but I deploy I deployed um, one service at least Mirror Beats that we can use, um, and I'm currently work. Yeah. So, but the, the biggest the, bi the the biggest limitation that I have right now is Mirror Beats need to contain all the files that we need that we can provide. Because it creates uh, an MD5 an MD, an MD, uh, MD sum uh, for each file. And then, if the remote mirrors as, um, as the same file with the same hash, then it can distribute uh, you the file. So, mirror bits do not give you the file, it just forward to the closest mirrors. Um, so, what it works for more, most, most of the mirrors, it does not work actual, actually because the, um, every mirror only keep the files for the last year, something like that. And so, um, for example, all the files that we can download from archives at Jenkins.io um, are not available. So the plan is to deploy archives at Jenkins.io uh, on Kubernetes um, that contains every file. So if a, if, a remor if a random mirror does not contain the file that we need, that specific archives always have, uh, that's the file that we want. And um, that's, that's the biggest limitation that I have right now. Um, the second thing that I discover um, while doing some tests is that we use a lot of HD access in our new house. So I cannot use the Nginx container or um, let's say traffic or whatever. So I need to rely on Apache. Um, but yeah, if you, want, if you want to flow the work that is going there, um, just go on Jenkins Infra slash charts. I will just put the link to that specific PR, um, and it's evolving um, right now. So once once um, when this specific PR is merged, uh, we should be able to um, to promote uh, it and and to do more more tests. Um, any questions regarding uh, the new stuff? One time, two time, three time, apparently not. Um, I'll just put this in the house. Um, I'll just update the documentation. Oops. My connection is super slow. I'll update the, the, the docs later. Um, I will just continue. Um, so the, the fourth topic, uh, at least the last topic that I want to also discuss is regarding the automated uh, Jenkins release. So um, I made some work to refactor CI the Jenkins, uh, release the CI the Jenkins.io, which is the Jenkins instance used to build 
to trigger release and to trigger the packaging process. And uh, there was one job running on that specific Jenkins instance, which was used to configure the Kubernetes cluster. So I created um, a separated Jenkins instance called called uh, infra.ci, the Jenkins.io. That instance is allowed to manage all Kubernetes you know, resources. Um, so now that the job is separated, I can be more restrictive on release that's here at the Jenkins that I use. So only allow uh, people who should be able to trigger a release um, to have access to that instance, at least to trigger a job. But everybody else should be able to just read um, the output. So the next step is now to, um, to push artifacts and to be sure that when we publish artifacts, we publish artifacts on the experimental release line. So we do not affect the current release process. So once this is officially, um, once I've validated this, I will uh, modify the publishing script to push artifacts to mirrors the Jenkins.io. So to the, um, I mean, the, 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 the service that we use to distribute packages. So the idea is um, once, once we publish to the, to the experimental release line and we validate that it's officially working correctly, um, we can start to, to use uh, to, to trigger releases based on the Jenkins um, Git repository and try to be as close as possible to the, um, to the real process. Because right now I'm still, I'm still releasing version on my own fork um, to be sure that I do not affect the, the current release process. Any question? Nope. Then let's continue. Um, um, and the last topic that I want to show you, um, which is a small demo about a tool that I wrote recently. I will just share my screen. It's going to be easier. Um, sorry about that. So, um, can you see my screen? Nope. Not yet. Um, yes. Yes, so you can see Kubernetes, okay. Um, so basically, it was a small project to automate the deployment of our application. Um, the idea is just to have a small CLI that can, where I can specify some rules, and based on, based on those rules, um, I can update a specific YAML configuration. Um, so I will just show you the current output of this. Uh, where is this? So the idea is um, so it's a small tool that I call update CLI. So we can either specify directory or a configuration file. If we specify the directory, it will just um, look at every file inside and apply the different rules. So in this case, I just have three examples. Um, the first one is to update every Jenkins instance that we have. So we just specify a source. So in this case, I want to retrieve the latest version from a Maven repository, which is the version 2.226. We specify a condition. So I want to be sure that the Docker image with that specific um, tag exists. Um, in this case, um, there is a version that we can use. And then it will update every target. So a target is just a, a file located on a Git repository. And I have to specify a specific a key value. So in this case, it will check that the Jenkins master image tag has the right value. So. In the, the latest, um, in the latest run, the version was al already updated, but otherwise it just changed the value and just push um, the new version uh, directly. So that's why uh, you saw some PRs on Jenkins infrastructure charts to automate the, the deployment. So currently the sources that, that I can use is to either fetch a version from a Maven um, repository, I can fetch version from a GitHub release. So for example, for the plugin side, it's also automatically updated. 
um, as long as you have a Docker image that contain the right, um, that have the right um, tag. So the configuration is, so this is, yeah, the, the output is um, quite simple. The configuration is um, charts. So I just created the directory, update cli.d. And so for example, for the plugin site, um, I specify the sources coming from the GitHub release. So um, I want the latest, the latest version from the Jenkins Infra slash plugin site API. I want to check uh, that the Docker image exists with the value generated from uh, the, from the GitHub release. And then I will just specify every file that I want to update. So the files, um, the key value, a message, uh, which is used in um, the Git commits. I specify if I want to, um, to update a Git repository located on GitHub, for example, um, but I can also just specify Git um, as um, a Git repository. Um, if it's a GitHub right now, it also open a PR, uh, otherwise it just push directly to a specific branch um, and, and that's it. So um, right now it's work, as I said, it's working for Jenkins plugin sites, but it would be nice to, to refactor, uh, at least to update the, um, the Docker image tag that we have in the Jenkins info organization to use um, GitHub releases if it's possible. And um, yeah, and otherwise I'm really looking for feedbacks on this small tool, if you have some. Any question? So that was the last thing that I wanted to share. Um, so if you don't have anything that you want to. I have a minor question. Yes. So right now I'm working on the roadmap proposal for Jenkins project. Okay. And uh, yeah, maybe at the next meeting, I would like to discuss um, uh, what would be roadmap items for the Jenkins infrastructure team. I can pull some uh, from the December contributor uh, summit materials. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, we could uh, discuss uh, them a bit more. And uh, also, an uh, infrastructure related topic is about the roadmap um, engine. Because uh, one question in the proposal um, is whether uh, roadmap JSON files should be um, uh, provided from Jenkins IO as a static bundle resource, or whether they should be hosted on a separate uh, repository and, uh, for example, uh, provided by CDN like JS Deliver. So, if somebody from the infrastructure team is interested to discuss this topic, again, I would suggest to cover it um, at the next meeting. Okay. So so, Oleg, the trade-off there between hosting it inside Jenkins.io and hosting in a separate repository, is that a bandwidth consideration, an access control consideration? So, how it happens uh, right now, um, basically, I re reused the engine from BlueOcean. So, every time a user navigates to a page, um, a JavaScript on the client side downloads a JSON file and renders it uh, and displays that. Uh, there is no immediate concern about bandwidth or whatever because we don't expect millions of users to go to this page. Um, it's mostly about maintainability because if roadmap was a separate repository, uh, it might be better to maintain, easy to maintain it from the administration side. So with regards to approval, to request reviews, visibility because it would be a separate repository, not a JSON file hidden somewhere in a huge Jenkins server repo. But yeah, that's a minor thing. Uh, how, f uh, how often do you think that you will update that roadmap? Uh, I think it will be a moving target with uh, several updates every week. At least it's my, it's my wishful thinking because we really want to, uh, to have it dynamic. Because so the main, my, my main concern, if you, I mean, the main advantage I see to keep it uh, under Jenkins.io, um, it's in one play, I mean, you have, Everything is in one place, so it's just easier to, to look at that JSON file and to update it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So personally, I would be more in favor to put it in Jenkins that I, Jenkins that I own repository. So that's my current implementation. Um, I consider moving it outside if somebody votes for that. 
because from visibility standpoint, it would be preferable. Let's say that's how Jenkins enhancement proposals are implemented in the separate repo. Well, uh, we have some issues with the process, but in principle, uh, I think it's better than having them in part of Jenkins IO. Mm -hmm. uh, but yep, yeah, I don't like trade those. So uh, right now I am just uh, doing uh, the simple implementation, copy paste of Blue Ocean roadmap, more or less. Uh, but yeah, for the future, um, I, uh, there might be proposals to move with the drug store repo and then CDN and other topics may arise. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's not something uh, we will need additional uh, effort from the infrastructure team. Because, no, because, because yeah, we, I mean, either, either you provide, either you want to have a specific application for it, and then you provide, let's say, a Docker image that we can deploy in a Kubernetes cluster, and, and that's all. Mm -hmm. uh, Udder, you just put it on Jenkins.io. Um, yeah, so we already use uh, CDN, for example, which is delivered uh, on the plugin side. And basically, we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't use CDN on plugin side. We do use it. So plugin side serves uh, images, or maybe, I'm not sure, maybe Gavin Morgan will work to that in the uh, latest version. But uh, when it started in September, all images uh, were served from CDN. And what's the, which CDN? Uh, JS Deliver. Because uh, we were doing, we were serving uh, GitHub documentation. So okay. we were using uh, CDN, which was providing out of the box support for GitHub repositories. Okay. Well, the entire J JavaScript ecosystem uh, works like that. So okay. that's why we didn't need anything from the infrastructure team because we just used the features provided by existing CDN in GitHub. Okay. So that could also be an option. Yeah. Okay. So I, do, I do not expect uh, somebody to solve uh, an issue with Azure CDN, CDN, if you're concerned about that. No. No. We don't, yeah. We don't, we don't have Azure CDN. Exactly. And uh, yeah, that's uh, my understanding. So I'm not even touching that. Did, did no, fast CDN go anywhere? Uh, I sent an email yesterday. So the last date was four weeks ago when they said um, I should receive the contract. And I tried. So right now it's nowhere. So I tried to, to see the current status. But yeah, I sent an email yesterday or the day before. Um, yeah, I think it was yesterday to see what was the current status. So the, uh, the, the, the reason why I don't want to use Azure CDN or um, the Amazon CDN or whatever is because um, if we use it for one site, we want to use it for every website. And depending on the website, um, it can be quite expensive. So that's why I did not put it in place. Sorry? Get a sponsored one is better. Yeah, so this is something that I would like to have. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, st I still try to find solution with Fastly. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Thanks, Alec, for your intervention. Um, any last topic? Yeah, uh, one question. I saw, I'm sorry I didn't attend last uh, week's meeting. I did see um, a topic saying IBM sponsoring. Were you guys looking for, was that just concerning the S390 and power resources or? No, it, it, something else? no it was, it was the, um, the VPC 64 and, and the S300. Okay. And, All right, sure, 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 sure. So, which is, I mean, which is for me sponsoring somehow. Clearly sponsoring. You're putting, putting money into, into the project that we use for compute resources. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was trying to talk internally about trying to see if you guys could use IBM Cloud for some x86 resources, uh, but that conversation has not gone <laughs> anywhere. So uh, I, that's why I was wondering. It was like, oh, if you guys wanted x86 resources. No, right now, right now, the, the main, yeah, the, right now it's those architecture. Um, yeah, that's the current state. Uh, Thanks. Um, have a good day, have a good weekend, uh, evening for, for some, and have a good day for the others. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.